Uh-oh, that can't be good. Well, three codes isn't a good start. Let's go over what we have. The first code is for a failed Valtronic eccentric shaft position sensor, which we will be replacing today. The second code is for a misfire on cylinder five. So when my valve cover failed a while back, uh, it soaked one of the coils. And after I did the work, I had an odd stumble on cold start periodically, but it never threw a code. Now that I have an issue with the Valtronic sensor, I'm figuring it made the conditions right for that coil to finally trigger a code. Uh, so as a result, we'll be replacing all the plugs and coils today as well. The last code is for a great gauge cluster error, which is related to a low battery. My battery is almost four years old and the car has been sitting for a week waiting on parts. So it's not terribly surprising to get that air. Uh, I'll be planning on replacing the battery later on. So we won't be looking at that today. To start with, we're going to remove the cabin air filter, uh, the strut tower brace, the cosmetic cover and the valve cover. Taking apart is the easy piece, so and the challenge is putting it back together. So we're going to time lapse through this and get to installing the new parts. Here we are with our valve cover removed. Unfortunately, one of our PCV breathers came off during the removal. Now these are just glued on, so we're going to clean this up really well and use some GB Weld to stick it back on. GB Weld has a fairly high heat tolerance, so it should work well in this application. Unfortunately, it does take 24 hours to set, so we won't be able to do reassembly until tomorrow, but we can still do uh, some of our other work and replace the plugs and the cam sensor and whatnot. So let's uh, get this glued back on and start setting.
So here we have all our spark plugs. You can see here our old spark plugs starting with cylinder one going to cylinder six. I did check the gap on them just out of curiosity and we're all they were all about a 0 0.05, well a loose 0 0.05. Specific to cylinder five where we've had our misfire, um, nothing particularly wrong. It looks just like the other ones. So I don't think the plug was the issue. Uh, and here we have our new plugs ready to go in. I've checked the gap. They all came pre-gapped to a nice tight 0 0.042. And you can see a, a light uh, kind of hue on them um, in that yellowy tinge, which is an anti-seize component. So we don't put anything on these threads before we put them in. We tighten them up to 18 foot-pounds um, and let's put them in. So here we have our new sensor to go in. Here's our old sensor to come out. Only three bolts hold it. The one thing to note is this is all open to the bottom of the engine. So if you drop one of these bolts, uh, you're probably pulling off the oil pan to fish it out. So be very careful when you're pulling those bolts out. And other than that, it should be a fairly straightforward swap. So here's our two sensors, uh, the old one and the new one. A couple things of note. You have to use a quarter inch 10 millimeter socket. If you're using a 3 8 drive, it won't fit through the access hole and get to that lower bolt. Uh, secondly, the bolts are all captive. So that makes it a little easier so you don't have to worry about losing these bolts in and out um, and feeding them through. So that makes it quite a bit easier in terms of installing and uninstalling. So um, the new one looks good. Let's throw it in. Before we reinstall the valve cover, we need to clean the surface where the valve cover sits. So with a combination of cleaners and a razor blade, we'll make sure that's nice and clean to get a good seal. Uh, here we have our coil packs. Number five, where we had the misfire, is right here and labeled. Um, we'll throw that one away, probably keep the rest as spares, and then install the new coils. It's been 24 hours, so let's see if our glue has set up. And as we can see on here, that's pretty set. Give it a tug to make sure we got a good bond. And sure enough, we do. So we will clean this up now, set the gaskets, and then install it back in the car. We have our valve cover here. We've double checked to make sure our gasket is seated everywhere. Now we will tow it in at the back first and then bring the front in. It is a really tight fit. Um, so you will be pushing against some of these areas. If you have a second person to hold everything back from you, that helps a lot as well. And with that, let's uh, see if we can get this set in. As we're doing so, Special caution to the gasket, making sure it stays seated in the cover because it does like to come out. So even once it's on, we'll probably run our finger around the edge to make sure everything is seated appropriately. Mm -hmm. 
Our valve cover is now back on. Everything has been torqued to uh, 88 inch pounds and including the three in the middle and the 19 around the perimeter. Now we'll put the heat shields in around the spark plugs, coils, and then all of our wiring. So I thought I'd take a minute to talk about the Valvetronics motor. So when we took it out, I had a little, my hex key here, and I had it on the shaft and turned it all the way clockwise and just till you feel some resistance. Uh, that positions the cam. Uh, and then when I removed it, I went counterclockwise so I could kind of thread it out. The reason we do that and so we don't have to tell the computer to relearn the stops on the motor. Uh, that's not equipment I have, and so this is what works well for me, and we'll be doing that again. So we're going to position the cam motor, and then we will tighten this up uh, until it's just barely snug, and then that should be the exact same position as when I removed it. So it goes in there like that. We'll put this into the uh, shaft. And then we'll just turn it counterclockwise until we're snug. Not too tight, just snug. There we go. Um, I had to undo a little bit of my electrical so I could get my get the motor back in. But with that, we should be good. Uh, we'll tighten the 8 mil bolts on the motor to 88 foot-pounds. And then these ones here that hold the gasket to 44 foot-pounds. This gasket has a tendency of leaking, so make sure your surfaces are extra clean. And then we will wrap up the electrical and um, should be ready for a test start to see if we have any leaks. Wow, that first start didn't go as planned. The second one worked well though. So what went wrong? It was actually the plug on my coils. So if we unplug this one, we'll just push that out and pull the plug off. So what happened was I pushed that on and clicked that down, thinking it was all plugged in. And oh, you can see there's actually a bit of gap there. So what happened was I clicked them, thought I had everything plugged in. Turns out it wasn't. I was probably only trying to start on one cylinder. So just a matter of flipping those up, making sure I have them pushed all the way in, and then locking them down. So I've done a quick check for leaks, and it all looks good. We can do final assembly now. We'll put the strut brace back on as well as the cabin air filter assembly back on and then we'll jump in the car and do one last check for codes. We're in the car. Uh, we'll start it up and do one last check on the codes. And look at that, zero codes. 
where you should be good to go now. Wow, that took a bit longer than expected with the plugs on the coils causing some issues as well as that PCV breather coming off. Uh, I added a couple extra hours to the project I wasn't quite expecting. That said, I hope it, you find this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. And thanks for watching.